Now for the end, the big end. Did you ever go, I'm asking you, to the Casita Maria Center? This is a historic uh, charity fiesta, and you thought you had a great time every time you went because Amit Erdogan was there making it fun. And I gave him credit too. Well, the ghost of Amit Erdogan still walks among us. But we all owe a real debt to someone called Jackie Weld Drake. This, this is for Jackie's undying work in elevating the Latin American community before it was popular to do so. In fact, it was unpopular. She still provides over its multicultural board. She and her husband, the one she has had for a long time, <laughs> I love him, are wonderful collectors of art and illustration, and Jackie, again, works on too many boards to count. She helped as a trustee for pins formation for the Penn Prize for Excellence in Biography, and for those famous big money-raising funds you all, galas you all go to instead of coming to this one. She knows where the bodies are buried, some of them in her own living room. She took over interviewing authors at the popular Brazilian court in Palm Beach when Parker Ladd gave that up. Incidentally, I'm wearing Arnold Scazzi tonight. And, you know, maybe it can do for me what it did for Barbara Streisand. No. Back to the Lizzie Award. I don't really know how I got along before Jackie Well Drake. Come up here, girl, and handle the Lizzie and take it home with you. Thank you, Liz. Okay, okay, baby. It, is, it really is quite an honor to get the Lizzie and to be only the second recipient after Liz Smith herself. When I was asked if I would accept it, I was truly delighted and truly moved because this is quite an honor. Liz has tirelessly dedicated herself to the issue of literacy and here she is still at it and still pursuing this dream of bringing literacy to adults in New York City. So it is with great pleasure and delight that I do accept the Lizzie. I also want to salute Arnold Scazzi and Parker Ladd, who for so many years were the force behind this gala and who along with Liz made it what it is today. And so though they can't be here in, in reality, they are always here in spirit. And I thank them for introducing me to Literacy Partners. Now, ever since I was a little girl, I have loved to read. I would finish one book and I would start the next. My tastes were then Rosemond Dujardin and her romances and Nancy Drew and her endless mysteries. I learned that there were women who drove roadsters and had boyfriends called Ned. And there were preteens who went to proms and who sipped sodas at counters, things that living in New York City, I really never did. But as my tastes grew and I became more progressive, I just had pillars of books wherever I went. I just started to collect them. I have pillars next to my bed, they're under the furniture, they're under the, uh, they're under the coffee tables. Now at least the Kindle has made 
my house slightly less treacherous than it's been before. My husband constantly complains, what are we going to do with all this? But they give me enormous pleasure. They have been a great joy in my life. The ability to read has brought to me just a whole world of adventure. Books open up other lives and other places. We can escape to worlds beyond the ones we know. We can live the lives of others and know that we are not alone in the universe. They transport us, they transform us, they heal us, and they give us solace. But who is to resist a really great story well told, not I? If I really want to know the truth about things, I read a novel. So, uh, so I have been down the river of doubt with Teddy Roosevelt. I have trekked the uh, Tibet with Edmund Hillary and slept in a blanket at the top of Everest. I have done all these things. I have been on a barge with Cleopatra on her way to meet Mark Antony with her purple sails unfurling and her dancing girls fanning incense along the shore. And I've done all this while reading books. When I think of the importance of reading in my life and how much it has given me, and I then think to the one in five New Yorkers who are functionally illiterate in this great city of ours, which means they cannot read a bedtime story to their children nor help them with their homework. They cannot read a subway map. And when they go to the doctor or they have to fill out a form, they must bring somebody with them to help them do that and to read it for them and to write the answers. So that makes me doubly proud of the work of Literacy Partners, which reaches out and helps heal and helps give people the confidence and the ability to move forward with their lives, as we've heard before. So it makes me extremely proud to accept the Lizzie and extremely proud to be involved with Literacy Partners, its volunteers, and all the people who make it work. So thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Yay, yay, great. That's good. You did good.